Good morning and welcome to church. Um, this morning, for our first song, we will do uh, page 256, The Old Rugged Cross, four verses. So before we go to the Lord in prayer, is there any we need to add to the list? Yeah, Linda Wheeler. Oh, that's right. Linda Wheeler. She's in the hospital. She's a good friend of mine, Brent and Linda Wheeler. Um, he used to come clip clip wreaths or clip bows. bows for me when I did wreaths. And she had heart surgery last week, and they sent her home because they didn't have enough nursing staff. I don't know where this was, but they sent her home, and now she's back in the hospital with pneumonia. Pneumonia. So, yeah. So she's in her 60s. Yeah. Linda anyway. Wheeler, her name is. They're yeah. from her city area. She was a ra uh, racer. Racer, Rasser, the bus, they had the buses down Hill City. Bruce. Uh, yeah, I'd like to add to uh, my friend Joanne. Joanne. She had cancer and she's coming back from her. Okay. Cancer. Okay. Anybody else? And if you got the announcements you see in there, 
Um, we were just notified Wednesday? Wednesday of Dylan. Um, we all know Dylan from camp. He has um, Hodgkin's Hodgkin's lymphoma. And as you see there, they're having a benefit for him Saturday, March 4th at 4 p.m. Uh, um, at the Eagles in Grand Rapids. Is it Sunday? Okay. <laughs> I was thinking it was sa Saturday too. I'll have to look. But but yeah. Anyways. Fourth is Saturday. Saturday. That's what I thought. So. We'll have, we'll check that out. And yeah. The benefit. Yeah. Sure. Yep. And I was going to get, um, try to see if Joe would get us a flyer too, or M or somebody get us a flyer so we can post it. But so just keep that in mind um, that um, that his benefit um, is that Saturday at 4 p.m. at the Eagles in Grand Rapids. Um, any others? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. For them traveling, going to that nice warm weather for a week. Absolutely. So, if there's no others, then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the week that you've provided unto us. The needs that you've given unto us this week and the protection you've taken us through. The paths that you've taken us down, may they have been fruitful. And Lord, we just thank you as, as we go on for those that whatever was uh, a blessing in our lives this week, whether it being traveling uh, to or back, um, whether it be jobs, or whether it be new members of the family. We know that there's a couple here that have new members into their families. And we so much appreciate the blessing that you've given unto us. We ask the Lord, and, and you know the, the sicknesses that are um, here for some of the people we know, whether it be Dylan um, with his cancer, or Joanne, or with Linda Wheeler with pneumonia. We just ask, Lord, that you be beside them as they go through these times. And for those that um, are fighting cancer, that you're able to help the doctors in their battle and that things will come better for them. Um, we also ask, Lord, that you just take care of uh, Carol and Mike as they travel. And Bring them back safely as they go to uh, get away from this uh, season that you put upon us. But we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So the next one is, do we change that one up? Oh, okay. Did we change that one up? No. no. Oh, okay. You found it? Okay, so the next one is uh, page 616, Stand Up for Jesus. Oh, that's actually 69, standing on the promises. Oh, change. Sorry. that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Oh, okay, the oh, change. Okay. The change, uh, it's page 69, Standing on the Promises. All four verses. Okay. All four verses. All right, idiot.
next song, it's page 49, I Must Tell Jesus. Uh, three? All four or three? Uh, three verses and we repeat the chorus. Okay. Three verses and we repeat the chorus. Yeah. yeah. Which one? One, two, and three? Yeah, one, two, and three. today um, as you see in the bulletin there um, our camp dates are up and getting ready for that um, it's been also a great week this week because I've been in touch with a few counselors and a few young adults um, it's it's they're starting to get excited we're still we're still five months away, and and it goes, fast. it goes it goes fast, it goes real fast. But um, excitement is starting to build. So um, I know of about six young adults that they are um, anticipating. <laughs> I know we're gonna be asking some. Mike and I have talked about it. Um, work this spring as we get in in May. There's a few of them that we're going to be um, asking extra help from this year. <laughs> We've got a few things uh, going on. Um, as you know, um, 17, 17, that is our high priority this year. That bathroom on the girls' side will be fixed. That is a must. So uh, I don't know if anybody's seen the pictures, what we got last year, when we tore it out last year. It was, yeah, it was a mess. I think that sewer's been in there since, that's yeah, that's the original. And oh my, it's, yeah. So anyways, um, yeah, the date's there um, for camp. Um, and it'll be, I'm sure, posted soon up on our website too. We'll get that all up to date. 
and we'll get moving forward again. Um, we'll be doing the same as last year. Uh, if you go on the website, you can fill out the application and pay right on there. Um, we, leading into another thing, at the end of the day today after church, if, you, if anybody wants to hang back, um, we will be having uh, our yearly church meeting and just a couple things, um, just what we have for finances and also a discussion on um, whether we should change, uh, move the camp fee up or not. Um, but we'll have that discussion at the meeting afterwards. Just It'll be just a short meeting real quick. And then the other thing, there was something else. <laughs> Can't remember what it was. But that's me. Again, I didn't write it down. <laughs> Sorry, Bonnie. Um, ladies Bible study, we're still on postponed yeah, for a while. Okay. Okay. Don't, 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 don't even jinx us that way. Don't trust her. Don't even. Minnesota. Yeah, we're still in February. Don't jinx us that way. Well, okay. So Rachel is talking about uh, looking at a f date to re-get it going. Maybe the end of March. Well, you might be safe there. Okay. Um, other than that, um, I can't think of anything else at this time. We'll just... Uh, Barb. What are the ages for the camp kids, juniors and seniors? I didn't put that on. Oh, um, ages is 7 to 10 for junior camp and 11 to 16 for senior camp. Yeah. So, um, I think we pretty well evened out on, on numbers. We moved that, them 11 year olds that one year up because we had so many in junior camp and not that many at senior. So now we're pretty even on numbers, so. Yes, yes, absolutely. And um, anybody that wants to, uh, and as we get closer, we'll be having a few more meetings um, as we get closer, um, just on camp itself. But if anybody wants to come up, just enjoy the day, come up and help, just come up. If you're coming up to help, we will have to sign um, we have to do a background check, and that's real simple. It, it, it doesn't, it just flags whether you can be in an area or not. That's all it is, and that's because of our insurance. So um, when we get closer, we'll get those out, and we'll get through that process. Um, if you don't want to do the, the background check, you can come up, but you have to stay in the common area the mess hall or the church. You can't go outside of that area if you're not background checked or stay overnight or any of that. So so with that, I can't think, is there anything else? Anybody have anything else we need to announce? So right after we'll have a short meeting and I guess we'll move on. And this this song is what a what a friend we have and you say it's got a long intro and a long outro. And outro. Okay. Page two verses. Yeah. Okay. Page four sixty six. What a friend. We'll do the first and the last. Two verses. <coughs> two. The first and last. <laughs>
you, Eddie and Chris. <clears throat> weather <coughs> starting again on dryness and all that anyways um, so getting into the message this week um, we've been in Romans for the past couple of weeks uh, if you have your Bibles you can turn over we're in Romans chapter 4 and we'll be starting today at verse 10 Um, as we talked over Romans this last few weeks, it's Paul was writing to the believers in Rome, the brethren in Rome. And it was on the, the point at that time when, when Rome was on its upwardness and it was taking over countries and people were being enslaved and, and Paul wrote this letter of encouragement to the, to the believers in Rome because he felt that that society, those believers, that those, um, those that were saved by God's grace needed more encouragement. And he really wanted to go and, and be there. But at the time, he wasn't able to go to Rome at, um, so he wrote this letter to him, and as we go through here, you know, he talks of those that live under the law and those that know that the law was to bring us to a Savior, knowing that the law was, was there to just show that we are sinners and that we couldn't do it ourselves. So before we get into, uh, into this chapter, let's go to Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, again we come to you thanking you for the son that you provided, that his death, his burial, and his resurrection is all we need. Just the belief in that is all we need for the righteousness that you put upon us, that is Christ. Our inheritance is Christ's righteousness. And with that believing that we go to your perfect heaven, we will be with you in all eternity. The law is for us to be sinners, knowing we are sinners, that we know there's no other way. For if we were to pay for our sin, it'd be separation for you, from you for all eternity. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given your son. And Lord, please bless your loving words unto us today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we'll start off there in chapter 10, or excuse me, chapter 4, verse 10. And it says there, how, uh, how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And all they were talking about is the Jewish people at that time, you know, if, if you were circumcised, that was that you followed the Jewish religion and you, um, that, was your, um, that was your sign between you and God that you believed in the Jewish religion. The Jewish religion was all about the law. You followed the law, the thou shalt nots. But yet, they didn't bring it to the next level. The next level was the law, God gave the law to the Jewish people, the people of Israel, as a schoolmaster, saying, we cannot be good enough to go to heaven to keep these laws perfect. And the next step would be to believe that Christ, uh, God sent Christ, his son, to die on the cross. And that fulfilled the law. And that's what they're talking about here. In verse 10, it says, he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Meaning, 
He knew the law. Those Jewish people knew the law, but they weren't, they weren't in God's family as believers. Because the circumcision that God talks about now for all of us is the circumcision of the heart. And, you know, it's, you know, your heart is your muscle, but at those days they thought your heart was your soul. And what it was was the circumcision of your heart, understanding that you were a sinner, that we are all sinners, and that we needed a Savior. And that was the circumcision of heart, was not to make ourselves perfect, because no one can, but that Christ was the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice for us. And with that, believing that, was the circumcision of the heart, the sin that was in the old nature. So we move on to verse 11, and it says, And he receiveth the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been being, uh, being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all of them that believe, though they not uh, be not circumcised, that the righteousness might be impu imputed unto them also. And he's talking back about, if you read back, he's talking about David, and he's talking about Abraham. And Abraham was justified by his faith. You got to remember, Abraham and David, they were all before Christ. So God said, okay, you know, you still have faith in me that I will send a Savior. And that Savior being Jesus Christ. And it's like us, you know, us be after Christ. Um, death on the cross, we look back at our Savior on the cross where they looked forward to their Savior being on the cross. And that's, like you say, when those that had faith, um, when they died, they went to Abraham's bosom. Because at that time, Christ had not perfected the law. He had not been sacrificed for the law. So when they went there, after Christ died on the cross, he was buried, he went to Abraham's bosom and then was brought back out with him and was ascended into God. Because at that point in time, then sin was paid for. So verse 12, it says, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, um, but who also walked in the steps of faith, of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. And these, they're talking of the Jewish people. Paul's talking of the Jewish people, and they walked in the circumcised, so they followed the law, and they thought the law, now I can make myself perfect, and I will go to heaven, because that's what the law states, but yet they missed the point of the law. And that's what he's getting at. You know, Abraham, Moses, David, they were, knew the law would not save them, but they knew that God gave them the law because it taught them it would not save them. And that's what he's saying here. Walking in the steps of, the, of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. So that is the walk, the, the, um, the uncircumcised of the heart, of knowing that Christ is the payment for sin. So we go on into verse 13, and it says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world, 
was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And that's what we've been talking about. You know, God promised Abraham that his seed would be the Savior, the Messiah of all mankind. But it wasn't them personally. You know, it says, um, heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It wasn't the law. Abraham wasn't saved because of the law. Abraham was saved because of his faith of what was going to happen. This, like I said, this before they looked forward to the, their Savior coming being the Messiah, Jesus Christ, on the cross. And that's what, that's what gave favor in God's eyes to Abraham. And that's why he was a just man. Verse 14, it says, <clears throat> For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made uh, of none effect. And that means... Those that follow the law, um, righteousness is not unto them. Meaning, if you are going to do the law, if you're going to follow the law, you have to follow it to a T and no human kin. So righteousness is not to you if you follow the law. If you follow the law, you, have, you don't have faith in what Christ did on the cross. You have faith in what you do. And that's why it said, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. And that's the promise of God that Christ will be the Messiah and the Savior. 15, it says, because the law worketh wrath... For where no law is, there is no transgression. Meaning, if you don't know the law, then you don't know you're a sinner. For knowing the law becomes knowledge of sin. Therefore, we are sinners. We understand the, no, the, um, the law, what the law was given for. To make us know we are sinners. And that's why it says, um, for where no law is, no, uh, there is no transgression. Meaning, if we don't understand the law, we don't understand who we are, we don't understand that we need a Savior, and we don't understand what Christ was for. Verse 16, it says, Therefore... It is of faith, of faith, that it might be by grace. To the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to all that, uh, that only which is of the law, but to, uh, to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all, us all. And, and, and it gets... It gets, it looks muddled there, or it looks, you know, a lot there. But it really comes down to is that, therefore, if it, uh, it is of faith, we have faith in Christ on the cross. It comes down to faith being belief. We believe, that's our faith, that Christ died on the cross. And our Savior is uh, the gospel, which we'd heard, which is um, Christ died on the cross. His blood was shed for our sin. He was buried and he rose again the third day, overcoming death, and now sits at the right hand of God. Believing the gospel of Christ died for you, um, he was buried for you, and then... Um, 
Christ died and buried, and he resurrected for you. Those three things is what we believe. Because Christ paid for sin, and he overcame death to have eternal life. And that payment of sin, once we believe, we have eternal life. Because our inheritance is in believing is Christ's righteousness. Because there was nobody else that was perfect. Christ is, was perfect in the law. The law had no effect on Christ. Verse 17, it says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. And that's talking of Abraham and how Abraham, through his generations, Christ was a seed. Um, the a father of many nations, before him who he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calledeth those things which be not as through they, though they were. And the quickeneth meaning he fastened us unto Christ. Once we believe, he fastened us unto Christ. That's why it's, we always say we're in the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Once you believe what Christ did on the cross, you become God's family and you become part of the body of Christ. And that's what he's talking here. Once you become a believer, you come into God's family and you become part of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. Verse 18, it says, Who against hope believeth in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken? So shall thy seed be. And, and, and he was, at first he was like, I cannot understand. I am an old man. My wife is an older lady. How are we going to have children? Because she was barren. So he was um, against hope. But then he was delivered into hope when God said, listen, you will be the father and the seed, the lineage will come for you, from you. And that meaning that eventually down the road, if you were to go in, you could follow the the transgression down from Abraham all the way down to Joseph who espoused Mary. So there was the lineage, but the son was of God. And that's the seed. And verse 19, and it says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he, was, um, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And that's what he's getting at, is the, the, um, the uh, against the hope. You know, Abraham was against the hope. But then it came to, he understood the hope. He was like, nah, this can't happen. But then he had faith because God said, no, this will happen. I promise you, the Savior of men will come through your seed. And when God told him that, he had faith and faith in God. That the seed, the Messiah, would come through his seed at some point. Verse 20, it says, And he staggered not at the promise of God uh, through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And that was the point. You know, there was the faith. Okay, God said it. This will happen. And to him, when Sarah had a child, it was not a miracle to him. Because he knew God said it, it will happen. To others, it was a miracle that Sarah had a child. But to him, it was not. That's why it said, 
He staggered not at the promise of God through the unbelief. He believed God at his word and his promise that Sarah would have a child. Verse 21, and it says, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to also to perform. 22, and it says, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Like he said, he wasn't in disbelief as others. He didn't think it was a miracle that Sarah was with child. He was, God promised it. God said it. I believe it. It will happen. God says it. It will happen. Verse 23, it says, now it, now it was not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him. Meaning, his faith in what God said, that a Savior was coming, was just like you and I, when we believe what, that Christ died on the cross, when we believe that, we have that hope, we have that faith, his righteousness is put on us, the same thing with Abraham. Although Christ had not been born, had not died for sin, Abraham still, still had that faith. And that was imputed, that righteousness was imputed to Abraham. Verse 24, it says, But for us alone to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Verse 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. That's the whole plan. And Paul put it into um, two nice little verses or two verses there. It's saying, we should be as Abraham. Our faith should be as Abraham. What God says, what God promised, we take his word and we, we can bank on it. We can count on it. If God said it, it will happen. And it's said there, but for us also. Now he's talking of all of God's children, all believers, from Abraham to the end of the world. He's talking of all of us. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. As believers, Christ's righteousness will be laid upon us. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. And that is Christ. And it says right there, it's very simple. It doesn't say that you have to quit something. It doesn't say you have to do more of something. It says there, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead. Well, we know that was God, but God is Jesus, the Trinity. The, we know that when we believe in Christ, what Christ did on the cross, that it, his righteousness is imputed on us. 25, and all it is is belief. Verse 25, who was delivered for our offense, for our sins. Notice, we started in the beginning of chapter 4 with the law. There was a lot of time, a lot of verses just explaining what the law was and what it was for. But we come down to the last two verses and it tells us what it did. That the law was there to tell us we are sinners. And that's what it says in 25. Who was delivered for our offenses, for our sins. Christ was given up. He was sacrificed for us. And was raised again for our justification. He paid for our sin, and then he rose again, meaning he overcame death, and that's us. 
we believe what Christ did on the cross, his death, his burial, his resurrection, that our sin is paid for. That he paid for our sin. And he gave us life, eternal life. And that's what it's saying there. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised up again for our justification. All we have to do is believe, and this is what's given unto us. And we'll end there for today. <clears throat> we will close with prayer. We'll go to our Father. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you today for, for the grace that you've given unto man. First, you showing us that we are sinners with the law. There's nothing that we can do. There's no man that is perfect. Only one that has walked the earth was perfect enough to satisfy the law. And he was sacrificed for us, for our sin, being your son, Jesus Christ. That he went to the cross and the cup of sin was poured upon him, all of our sin. And he died. He shed his blood, paying for that sin. He was buried to show the death, but also to go into Abraham's bosom and to lead those to, that were captive free. And then he rose again the third day, overcoming death and showing us that we believe this, we have the same righteousness as him, that we have eternal life, to never be separated from you ever. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've given unto us, that your love is so grand that all we have to do is believe. It's as simple as that. We thank you, Lord, for all this. Please, Lord, take us this next week. Take care of us. Put a hedge of protection around us and give us our needs for the week. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you have given unto us. And may our path intersect with somebody that is searching for you. We ask, Lord, that you help us through that. We thank you for all. In Christ's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> um, page sixty nine. Is that what it was? Yeah. Sixty nine. One verse. First verse of page sixty nine. verse this week that I want to share with you to take is from 2 Corinthians in chapter 12 and verse 9 and it says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Thank you and have a great week. Thank you.